All right, and we're rolling. Hey guys, welcome to the Jeep Saw Garage. So, whoa, I'm kind of a little wobbly there. I'm not used to holding this thing. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Jeep Saw Garage. So today is a super exciting day. We are finally gonna start this 92 rebuild. And you guys that have been following my channel, you know that uh, I've done a complete engine rebuild on this uh, 4.0 1992 Jeep Wrangler YJ. And if you're new to my channel, follow along. I'm all about helping you guys with repairs, doing your own maintenance, rebuilds, that kind of stuff. Save yourself a lot of money doing it yourself. And I've got my special helper here. Jason came to join us today. It's my game face. Good morning. Hey, we're excited. So the very first thing, I've got this Jeep like wedged back in the corner of my shop here. So I gotta get it out of there. All right, very first thing, we are gonna fill it with coolant. I'm actually gonna uh, run some down this funnel, right into the thermostat housing there, try to get some in the engine that way, and also fill the radiator completely full. And then we have the uh, burping mechanism we're gonna use. And I'm gonna throw a new uh, oil filter on here, and yes, this video is sponsored by Amsoil, but we will get to that. I actually reached out to them because I wanted to be using their products specifically, wow. <laughs> specifically because of their oil, but we'll get to that in a bit. Is it rolling? Mm -hmm. Stretching my arm. So Jason, what's it like to be a cast member on the set of Deep Solid? Well, I'll tell you, it's a lot of glamor. It's mostly the side benefits that I like. I just have to remember, I have, ah. I have trouble remembering what those benefits are. Did you put oil in it? Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm gonna be using uh, Amsoil SAE 30. And like I said, I actually reached out to them. They supplied this free of charge to me, but I wanted to use their oil. And the reason is, this is what my machinist recommended. It's all that he uses. He's used a lot of different oils in the past. He's never had an issue with uh, Amsoil. I'm not an expert on engine rebuilding, but my machinist is, built thousands of engines. And if he says this is all he uses, is good enough for him, well, I trust his opinion. So that's why I'm using Amsoil. You have to have high zinc formula uh, for this flat tappet cam. Super important on breaking in your camshaft of having the high zinc. You cannot use synthetic oils. You have to either use a zinc additive or high zinc oil, but this is what I recommend. I'm gonna be sure to link it in the description below. Before I start adding oil, I wanna make sure I got the uh, oil plug in the oil pan. Yep, there it is, we're good to go. I'll be seven quarts I think I can pour without spilling. All right, Jason has the uh, coolant filled. He attached the uh, heater core hose there. Now we are going to uh, overfill this funnel so that it can burp. Then when the uh, thermostat's open and running, uh, or when the thermostat opens up, it'll suck in some more of this fluid. And make yourself a checklist uh, as you're going through the startup procedure. I've got certain things I needed to make sure I got done. So the last thing you want to do is forget one of these crucial steps. So make a checklist, double check everything. Uh, like I check my oil plug, filter, oil, just kind of go through each system in your head, uh, double, triple checking everything. All right, got the uh, six quarts of oil. Now next we are going to uh, manually prime the ho uh, whole oil system. So to do that, we're actually going to remove the distributor and put a drill down in there and spin the oil pump. Uh, with a drill and that primes the entire system. You don't want to 
because this uh, was completely dry of oil, we want to make sure we fill all the oil galleries, all the little bearings and everything with a uh, good oil. So we're going to pull the distributor here. So let's get the cap out of the way. Unplug it. Now, right now the distributor, I want to make note of where the rotor is pointed. And it is right there. I should get a pin. I'm going to get a pin and mark that. We have to keep track of exactly where the rotor is pointed so we can get it back in the same spot. What's the next video for Bronco Solid? Good question, Chris. Um, I'm actually editing painting right now. So it was hard. So as I pull the distributor out, you'll notice that the rotor here, it'll kind of back off a little bit because it's on a helical gear, which is a twisted gear. So it's at like the uh, five o'clock position right now. When I back it out, see how it backs off to like 3.30 or 4 o'clock there? And I'm just going to leave it in that exact position right there, set it down somewhere so I can slide it right back in the same spot. Uh, right here, uh, this is where it mounts to the engine block, so it'll only go in one way. So that is the uh, oil pump right down there. We're going to put a flat blade on a drill and spin that clockwise. So I've got the uh, oil pump engaged here, that flat blade down on there. I could put a drill on here and spin this. Doesn't have to be super fast. To Vita, watch. Ta da! Go ahead and put that anywhere. So Tavita is watching from Kansas. All right, let's check the uh, oil level here. See where we're at. And we are good. We are up at the top of safe. Just one little tip. So now I'm going to try to get the uh, little slot on the oil pump lined up to where it was when we started so I can slip the distributor back down in exactly how it was. Hopefully it just slides right in here first try. Nope, I'm off, I'm off a tooth. So it's not going down into the oil pump. So it's just a matter of getting this lined up exactly where it was. So finally with that last attempt, it just slipped right in place. Got it lined up on the block there and it's pointing right where my little black mark is. So we're all set. So let's uh, install the mount here. Little mounting bracket bolt. Hunters, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. That's all right. uh, you're, you're recording, you have the floor. So we will just get the uh, distributor cap, all the wires, the coil hooked up here, and we'll be all set. So this is going to be epically disappointing if it's just gu 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 I'm going to laugh. I mean, it'll be partially like sad laughing and. Kind of laughing, laughing. There'll be tears on my part. Actual tears. I'll we'll have actual tears too from laughing. <laughs> so on the engine startup, uh, very first thing we got to do is make sure we have good oil pressure. As soon as it starts, oil pressure is key. If you don't have oil pressure, then you got to shut it down and check things. Check your oil. Make sure you have enough. Um, then we got to uh, watch for leaks, keep it what, between 1800 to 2500 RPMs. Yep. Warm it up, finish off the uh, burping of the, the coolant. Work on that, don't know. I'd say. Well, 
This is actually uh, ethanol free gas I'm using. Don't really need ethanol free, but it's gonna take me a little while to use this up, so I thought I should put some really good gas in it. So what else do we gotta do? Uh, hook the battery up. <laughs> That's awesome. Mike says he's not on nightfall for this episode. Yes, you wanna be in full control of all your faculties to take this one in. And how long has it been? Uh, that was the next question. How long is it? And your stupid tablet keeps shutting off. Why is it doing that? <laughs> God, Go to settings it? and you can change it. Oh. Um, Ethan says, yeah, gas going in, good sign. Jake was asking, how long has it been since the project started to now? Well, you bought this thing two years ago. Well, why and there's I gas looking? leaking behind the wheel. Yeah. That's not good. Um, two years. And uh, HG Ninja, oh, also great. known as SG Ninja at times. Um, what do you say? Good luck? God. Air just shut off again. Probably leaking at the fuel filter, uh, according to Mike Campbell. Yeah, very well could be. Because um. weren't you messing with that like a little while ago? Yeah, but it's back here by the fill. Oh, like on the fill tube? Yeah, and running down the uh, leaf spring. Oh, nice. What's a little gas going to do? What could that hurt? Be sure to have yourself a good uh, fire extinguisher handy. All right, last step. Hook it up to the battery. Tommy Lee says, came in to print stereo schematic. Back to it. You guys are legit. <laughs> you know, I've always been a Motley Crue fan. That means a lot coming from Tommy Lee. All right, so here we are. We've got everything hooked up, all the fluids topped off. This is the point where you double check things. So let's start with distributor. So distributor, it's all good. Wires, they're all in proper order. We filled it with oil. Double There's no two sensor down here. All right, guys, you ready? First start, let's give it a try. Dale is a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman. Busted, they got you. So when we start this, very first thing I'm looking for, as soon as I start it, uh, I want oil pressure. And then uh, Jason's gonna be looking for leaks. I'm gonna keep it between uh, 1800 to 2500 RPMs. Kind of vary it in that range a little bit while we warm it up. Well, Jim says about time. Yeah, we agree. <laughs> I know, we've only been waiting like, what, a year? All right, let's, all right, let's give it a shot. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, but we're gonna do it anyway. I choke. No start. Huh. That's a big letdown. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Click. Nothing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So anticlimactic. All right, I'm gonna hit it. Your starter's all dented. That's what you wanted, right? All right. Looks like you got a problem. The battery's good. It's like 12.4 volts. But yeah, it's just not even turning over. I can turn the engine by hand with a wrench. Uh, do we so... have a ground problem? Do you want to disconnect the battery while you're doing that? Yeah, Quinn Trent says a bad connection will stop the starter from spinning, but will allow it to click. You should disconnect the battery. Where are you going? Who votes? I'm not going anywhere. Who votes for disconnecting the battery while messing with the hot leads on the starter? I do. Anybody else vote with you? Oh, he's doing it. Okay. Situation averted. Crisis averted. Jason's uh, always thinking logically. Leave the battery on. Everyone needs a little shock. No, I'll just give her. Wouldn't that be great footage though? Like, ah! <laughs> This is making me nervous here. Yeah, go ahead. Same thing. It started after I, well, it started to crank after I put the terminals across the two. Um, All right, we're ready to fire it up. I bet you won't do anything this time. Yeah. Oh, you're assuming it's 
starting. So oil pressure and then uh, leaks. We got the leaks covered. Yeah, we've got the leaks definitely going. Hey. Eh? Yeah. I think it was the kicking. Timing. I, I agree. It sounds re. I feel like I should say, hey, welcome back, because it's actually a few weeks later. We went to do the initial startup and break in on this and it started giving us a lot of trouble. It wouldn't start, basically. You can go back and watch some of my uh, older videos. I didn't link them in the series here, but watch some of those old ones. You can see some of the struggles of getting it running, but now we've got it figured out. Uh, we had trouble with the starter, the timing, the grounds. We checked fuel pressure, just a lot of things, right? It was a myriad of issues and it's by some miracle it's working now. I would put money on the grounds and the timing. The timing was all, we messed up the timing, but put it back to where it belongs, so it's all good now. So we're gonna, sorry. I was gonna say, timing was good, then we messed it up, then we put it back. Just double check the uh, oil here. Yeah, we're good, we're in the safe zone. So let's hook up the uh, coolant and we'll be good to go. I love this thing. This thing's great, I mean, really. Yeah, this is a great system for burping your, your coolant there. As the thermostat opens, like I said, we're gonna have air coming out, so we'll fill this up a little ways and uh, burp the system. All right, we're all set, so we're gonna fire it up. I'm gonna keep the uh, RPMs between 1800 to 2500, kind of varying in that uh, area for about a half hour here to start seating those rings, breaking it in. Uh, we're also- I'll set a timer. Yeah, we'll set a timer to watch that. We're also gonna be watching the oil pressure, like very first thing, we wanna see that oil pressure come up. If our oil pressure doesn't come up, we gotta shut it down and figure that out. And we're also gonna watch the temperature of the engine. Jason's gonna be out here watching for leaks. You know what's really funny? If I get just a little bit closer to the camera, you look like my kid. <laughs> All right, here we go, this has been a long time coming. So we've double checked everything, right? Uh, I think so. Let's do it. All right, there we go. Uh, it didn't blow up. Uh, engine temperature up to where it needs to be. Oil pressure was good the whole time. Kept it between that 1800 to 2500 RPMs. Kind of varied it between there a bit. So that's our initial stage of break-in. So for the next phase of our break-in, we're gonna, for the, about the next half hour, still keep it under that 3000 RPMs for about 30 minutes as we're driving it. We wanna keep it 1800 to 3000 RPMs. Uh, then after that, we can go ahead and bring it up to 3,500 to 4,000 RPMs for the next half hour. Then for the final phase, you can hit that 4,000 to 4,500 RPMs. You don't want to maintain it there. You're going to still have variations in your speed. Um, engine oil. I'm going to change this after 200 miles. Some people change it after the initial like half hour, one hour of break-in. But from what I'm reading, I'm going to go with the 200 mile. It's got a good filter on there, good oil. I'm going to run it for 200 miles break it in that way, do an oil filter change, but I'm gonna put high zinc oil back in it to uh, complete the rest of the break-in. So after 200 miles, oil change with more high zinc oil, that AMS oil. So I'd like to give a real special thank you to uh, Engine Tech for sponsoring this build and uh, following me through this whole process. I hope it's been super helpful for you guys. Uh, be sure to leave a comment down below. Check out the links I have down below for uh, the Engine Tech products and the AMS oil I used on this engine break-in. 
Anything else to add? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Bronco Solid, where I never post a video. <laughs> See what I got? Um, so I think that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.